Hello class, have you ever wondered how law enforcement agencies use analytics to better serve their communities? Well, you're going to find out. In this presentation, we will appraise the analytical readiness of two local law enforcement agencies, the Redlands Police Department and the San Bernardino Police Department. We will explore the differences and similarities between the two different departments. We will present our findings in the four key areas of analytical readiness re referenced by the analytical expert, my favorite, Thomas Davenport. These areas will include the correct focus, the correct organizational culture, the right people, and the right technology. I will start with the correct focus. As I mentioned Thomas Davenport earlier, I will start with a quote. Although analytic, analytics competitors encourage universal fact-based decisions, they must choose where to direct resource-intensive efforts. So when we're talking about police departments, their focus is going to rely on the needs of the cities that they work for. So both of these agencies, Redlands and San Bernardino PD, they have a strong focus on part one crimes, okay? And part one crimes are gonna be the most dangerous things like homicide, rape, ra robbery, and aggravated assault. So part one crimes are the most important to prevent for those reasons. Focusing on these crimes allows agencies to allocate the most resources toward the most significant prevention efforts. San Bernardino PD has more part one crimes than Redlands PD does. Because of this, they section off their part one crimes. Okay, so for example, they don't just have a section that says robbery. They break it down into robbery with a knife or robbery with a gun or another weapon or something that they would call strong arm robbery, which is when you're robbed with no weapon at all. So they break it down into specific groups. This allows them to better focus their resources. Now Redlands PD focuses analytics on response times to different types of calls, okay? The, the amount of time a police response takes is extremely important to the, city, the citizens of Redlands and not quite as important to the citizens of San Bernardino PD. So Redlands puts a big um, importance on that. This factor is not as important to San Bernardino PD and it, it's not gonna reflect as much in their analytics. Redlands PD report focuses more on traffic collision investigations than San Bernardino PD does. Due to understaffing, Redlands PD has very limited resources to allocate to traffic issues. Therefore, they need analytics to make these important decisions. Both agencies appear to be taking the needs of their citizens into account when focusing their analytics. Focusing their analy analytics in the correct places will allow them to justify requests for new technology and other necessary resources in the future. Now I'm going to turn it over to the lovely Suzette, and she's gonna tell us all about culture. Okay, so we have know that the culture is a soft concept, and analytics is typically viewed as a hard discipline. So straight from the book, we know that those who don't record history are doomed not to learn from it. So both police departments exhibit a data-driven culture making fact-based decisions like Will talked about in a coordinated way. This is exemplified by an effort made to collect data and um, report that data on a regular basis. Senior leadership like the Redlands Police Chief of Police champions the strategy that is then pushed down through the ranks. And Redlands Chief Police was a former crime analyst both departments must use the results from data analysis to base decisions regarding limited staffing resources and new technology. They aren't only identifying the, day, the data they like to collect, but they have a systematic way of organizing it and using it to make decisions. Both departments seek to the upper hand through optimization of their data in order to know what areas they need to patrol, their staffing needs, their crime activity trends. So we found that both organizations recognize the importance of analytics as they relate, relate, to, crimes, relate to crime statistics. Analytics is so strategically important to both Redlands PD and San Bernardino PD that they are managed and reported regularly by crime analysts. And Alejandro will explain how the right people influence analytical readiness of both departments. Alrighty, now I'm going to be talking about the right people. Uh, I'm going to start off with a quick quote off of uh, Davenport's article in 
on uh, the Harvest Business Review. He said analytical firms hire analytical people, and like all companies that compete on talent, they pursue the best. However, many agencies uh, are still not aware of the advantages of an effective crime unit, and others don't know how to implement it, whether they don't have the right resources or the knowledge to effectively integrate one. As Will said pre or, uh, previously mentioned, uh, Redland Speed doesn't have the right resources to incorporate one, so they don't see it as a priority to hire this unit. Um, but however, both Redlands and San Bernardino PD do have high, highly motivated crime analyst divisions. It's the colossal reason why they joined the department. Everybody who's in police task force are really caring about what they want to do. People are the driving force behind every organization, so therefore it's, right, it's, it's really vital to hire the right people, especially in an industry where everybody, not only your life is, a, is at stake, but everybody else's life is at stake. The International Association of Crime Analysts recommends one crime analyst per 70 sworn officers. So if we break it down a little bit further, uh, both police departments are understaffed due to budget. We are looking at Redlands PD at 88 sworn officers to one crime analyst. They do have one programmer who is employed by the city and not designated by the PD. Uh, so in, if we take this into consideration, I think Redlands PD should uh, include two analysts since one is not actually designated through the police department itself and it doesn't understand the department's needs. San Bernardino, as Will uh, alluded to earlier, does have 251 sworn officers, so they have two crime analysts and one GIS analyst. They should probably have, on average, three based on the officers alone, and GIS isn't their priority. Another thing is struggling to fill positions in. We have to take into consideration the budget, the 2012 uh, bankruptcy from the city of San Bernardino, the competitive hiring environment, the public scrutiny with not only officers, but anything associated with the police force. We also have to uh, and see that a lot of the police force is now retiring, so obviously they're at higher ranks to the newly recruits. We have to, uh, a lot of the police departments are including incentives to fill in those ranks. So even though they might have competitive uh, newbies in, they want to still, they don't have the experience to fill in the topper ranks. However, the total crime statistics has been decreasing beca uh, because of these crime analysts. Uh, from 2018 to 2019, Redlands PD did have a decrease of 14.3 in overall. And then San Bernardino PD did have a decrease of 1.67%. And now I'm going to be passing it on to Logan, who's going to be talking about technology. Thanks, Alejandro. Thomas Davenport uh, said that competing on analytics means competing on technology. And while most serious competitors investigate the latest statistical algorithms and decision science approaches, they also constantly monitor and push the IT frontier. San Bernardino PD is using Microsoft Excel as an input tool to capture data into their master data system. The data is then displayed in a system of engagement called Omega Operations Dashboard using Esri's Geographic Information System technology to identify the location of reported crimes. Speaking of which, I think there's a crime occurring now. This information is shared with constituents in the recurring reports posted online. Redlands PD is using SAP's Crystal Reports as both an input and reporting tool. RPD is displaying this data in real time using the same Omega Operations Dashboard powered by Esri. The key differences between the two agencies is the input method. San Bernardino Police Department's basic Microsoft Excel input method is less user-friendly and easier to manipulate therefore increasing the risk of data pollution. Redlands PD uses SAP and that user interface is an improvement over Excel and has strict rules reducing the risk of data pollution. Redlands PD has a slight edge in technology. Both organizations are leveraging calls for service data to identify data elements such as age, gender, time, location, type of crime, weapons used, if any, etc. This data, when displayed on a map and filtered in different ways, visually communicates correlations between data elements, enabling officers to set efficient patrol routes, improve response time, and in some ways, prevent crimes from occurring. While law enforcement agencies can use this technology to visually display historical data, this technology will need to be augmented with technology and analytics outside of these tools to move into predictive and prescriptive analytics. For example, Crystal Reports and Operations Dashboards 
are great tools for dealing with historic data and identifying correlations that can prove efficiency. These tools are great for dealing with dynamic, real-time developing situations. However, scenario building, predictive, and prescriptive analytics will require more advanced tools. Larger departments, like the Los Angeles Police Department, use a tool deemed Operation Laser to perform predictive analytics that will identify the likely future locations of certain types of crimes. It also identifies repeat offenders who frequent the area. Redlands Police Department and San Bernardino Police Department are on the brink of taking these next analytic steps. The challenge will be to limit profiling. Profiling does not produce uh, uh, probable cause. These unique limitations will prevent police departments from complete optimization, but there are still many areas that can be positively impacted through partnerships with officers and community leaders that can reduce crime and improve safety. Law enforcement agencies do not really have competition, but their goals and focus on public safety are clear. Both Redlands PD and San Bernardino PD have the technology to analytically complete, compete against their own past performance, improving public safety in their cities. We presented how two law enforcement agencies, Redlands PD and San Bernardino PD, use analytics to better serve their communities. We presented our appraisal of their analytical readiness, including their differences and similarities. We also presented our findings in the four key areas of analytical readiness referenced by analytical expert Thomas Davenport, including the right focus, the right organizational culture, the right people, and the right technology. It is clear that both law enforcement agencies are providing improved service through the use of analytics. There are also opportunities to enhance analytical capability to further build on their abilities towards optimization of services to their constituent communities. On behalf of Will, Suzette, and Alejandro, I'm Logan Campbell, signing off.